Hey, second grade, it's time for your art lesson with your friendly neighborhood art teacher. You're going to be working on making an astro flower with me today. Your expedition has been about the secret world of pollinators. You've been learning about pollination, the living organisms who do the pollinating, and some of the plants that they work with. Your guiding questions, how can we help each other grow? How do pollinators help the plants grow and survive? How do we become researchers and share our learning? And why should people help pollinators to survive? Today, your learning targets are, I can identify shapes and lines in nature, I can draw an astro flower, and I can color in my flower with no white spaces left over. Before we begin, you're going to need paper, pen, a pencil and eraser, and coloring supplies. It is optional, but it will be very helpful, if you can use a CD or a DVD, too. You can use any kind of paper. It can be lined paper. It can be copy paper. And you can use any kind of coloring supplies you have, crayons, colored pencils, or markers. Remember, when we're working on this, you want to draw big. These are examples of aster flowers. They do come in a lot of colors. These in particular are purple. I'm going to show you how we're going to work on drawing one. So this is going to be the end result that you work with or get to. The first thing we're going to start off with is the DVD or the CD. Uh, you're not going to scratch it because you're not drawing on it. So it should be okay to use one just for a moment. If you don't have one, I found that there's masking tape that's about the same size, or if you have a paper plate that you can use, that also works. Just don't go bigger than the page. So I'm going to trace my circle once, and then I'm going to do the little circle for the inside. And for those of you who are remembering, this is going to be a lot like when we do our sunflower. We're going to turn this little part of the flower or this little circle, sorry, into the middle of the flower when we drew the bumpy lines going around. I'm going to add some more little bumpy lines on the inside. And those are, for those of you who remember, are all of the, what? The seeds. Next, we're going to work on the petals. We're going to make the petals go all the way out to the edge of this line, uh, circle, which is why we traced it. I don't want, line, I don't want you to draw petals that are only this big. Aster flowers are different than our sunflowers because they do not have those baby petals. Their petals are all the way up, all the way out. So we're going to start first one. That shape is going to be a skinny oval. Now, watch, see how I'm turning the paper? Another skinny oval. Our sunflower petals were actually pretty big, right? Well, we're not doing that. This is not the same flower. Make sure that you are doing skinny petals. Keep turning your paper. I'm going to try not to knock my camera over. You're going to do long skinny ovals. You want to make sure that they're going back to the middle and all the way out to the outside. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm keeping a neat oval. Now, are these on top of each other down here? No. You want to make sure that each one is staying in its own spot. You don't want to have a whole bunch of them overlapping. One of the problems I think we've had in the past is that people get about here and then they start doing really skinny little ones. Remember, turn your page each time you're trying to draw a petal and make sure it goes all the way out to the edge where that circle is. I'm going to keep going around. So 
See if I can fit, yeah. Almost done. Now, those are the front petals. Just like we did with the sunflower, we're going to need to make back petals. But those are going to be easy because you don't have to draw the bottom part, you just have to draw the top part. And it goes behind each one. So it's going to be like you're drawing a big U, sometimes upside down. And keep turning your paper. Go back through, make sure that comes up there. And these are the ones that are in the back. Make sure they go all the way down. Back up. And I'm down to one more. Alright. Now, what am I going to do about this circle that's around everything? I'm going to erase it. Because this was just there as a guideline. It's not really part of the flower. But when you see the picture again, you'll see that almost all of the petals in an astro flower go out to the same distance. Some might be a little bit shorter, some might be a little bit longer, but we're going to keep it. Now, if I accidentally erased something, all I have to do is go back over the tip or whatever I erased. Uh, if you want to add some detail, we're going to add one little line on the inside, but only on the petal in the front. This just makes it look like it's got a little bit more of a fold. And I'm going to do, trying to get mine. They don't go all the way up the flower petal either. All right, so we've got our aster flower done. Now we got to do the part of the what? The stem. So we're going to make sure this stem goes all the way down to the bottom. Now, Aster flowers are different from sunflowers because their leaves are actually pretty tiny. Sunflowers had those really big ones that we had to draw. Aster flowers have pretty skinny, little thin leaves. And they have a lot of them. So if you want to draw some next to each other, that's fine. Now, if you remember, I drew a little bud. I will show you how to draw one of those. I'm going to draw the stem that's coming off of the other stem. And I'm going to draw first a circle. I'm going to draw like a square bottom. But up here at the top, I'm going to make it kind of like a drop. And then Here's part of the stem still, and I'm going to make that by going... I'm going to draw some little lines coming through it. And then you can add another little leaf, and you can erase this part in the middle, and you've drawn a little bud. So next, you're going to work on coloring. Astro flowers come in a wide variety of colors. So the good news here is that you get to pick what color you want to make it. You can go with bold, bright colors. You can go with relatively dark colors if you want. But remember, pollinators are attracted to the flowers that are very brightly colored. So a pollinator would be more likely to come see your aster flower if it was a very bright color. In my example, I did purple. For this example, I think I'm going to go with some pink. And I'm going to do the inside where the seeds are yellow. Now, like with our sunflower leaves, the leaves that are in the back are going to be a darker color. I'm not going to do all of them, unless that'll take a little too long, but I'll do a few. And then I added that one little line of dark on those, then I come back over and I'll color it pink. 
remember, we overlap some of our colors and we color on top. And you blend them together. So, let me pull that up a little bit so you can see better. There we go. That's the beginning of my new Astro Flower. Here's my old Astro Flower. Here are the examples again. So this is what an Astro Flower looks like. Your target, I'm sorry, your task today is to draw one large Astro Flower. Color in your Astro Flower and you may choose what color to make it. If you have extra time, draw a garden of them. At least three Astro Flowers. You can make them all the same color. You can make them different colors. Try to keep track of your artwork. You'll need it in the future when we're working on the art subjects, art lessons. If you have any questions, please email me at afrans at amanaacademy.org. And I'll see you later, second grade.